Hello, everybody, and welcome. Uh, this is the accounting professor. This is Property Plants and Equipment Part 7, Repairs and Maintenance versus Betterments. My name is Bennett Tchaikovsky. This presentation is copyright 2008 to 2022 by Bennett Tchaikovsky, all rights are reserved. Any redistribution is expressly prohibited without the prior written permission from the author. The opinions expressed herein are those of myself, the author, and not the author's employers and or other affiliated organizations. Okay, so we're going to talk Part 7 is we're going to be talking about repairs and maintenance versus betterments. So uh, what I always like to do is I, uh, you know, when you're when you're doing these types of videos, most a lot of publishers get very protective of their author's stuff. But, you know, hey, we've got some people out here who, you know, are sharing this and this is the property of uh, this particular um, item or this particular uh, company, a betterment. And accounting is a capital expenditure that improves the quality or extends the life of an asset, such as an upgrade of a machine's production capacity. A betterment differs from normal repair and maintenance expenses, for example. Yeah, so like, let's go through now. So this is a definition of a betterment, and I'm going to put this below in the uh, links. Okay. Or in the description of the video. So over here. Uh, repairs and maintenance uh, is, is generally going to be a cost, which is going to be the normal upkeep of the equipment, right? So a betterment, extend the useful life or improve the asset in some way. So if we look at examples of repairs and maintenance, like broken vehicle windshield is shown in that article, that's repairs and maintenance, an oil change, repairs and maintenance, fixing a flat tire, repairs and maintenance, Repairing a repairing a dent in the bumper, repairs and maintenance, right? Now, there's going to be certain things which are going to kind of be like a gray area. Like when you look at a set of tires, you can say, well, if I buy them from Costco, which is the place where I would buy it from, that's going to give me another 40, 50,000 miles or whatever it might be in terms of life on the vehicle. But those are going to be something that generally... Uh, it can be it could be questioned about it either way whether or not it should be capitalized but again it's going to kind of depend on the situation but what are some examples of a betterment a new car engine that will extend the useful life of a vehicle by a hundred thousand miles a new transmission that will expand the useful life of the vehicle by seventy thousand miles right in addition that adds ten thousand square feet to a building so in all these situations, right, these are truly like capital improvements, right? This is not cleaning the house. You're adding on square footage to an existing uh, structure, right? So let's go ahead and take a look at this. For the transactions below, identify each as a repairs and maintenance expense or as a betterment. Prepare the appropriate journal entry to record the initial transaction. If the transaction is a betterment, prepare the year-end adjusting journal entry. So let's go ahead and take a look at this one over here. Okay. So let's do the 12, the 2131. So over here on 2131, I pay 50 for an oil change and uh, 290 to replace a broken windshield on a vehicle. Right. So what would I go through and do? I'd say, well, repairs and maintenance expense. Um, and I could put this over here at if it's to the same company, put it over here at 340. Right now, if I'm trying to go through and itemize what I'm tracking in terms of oil, what I would probably do is I would probably say repairs and uh, repairs and maintenance expense, broken window, repairs and ex maintenance expense, oil change, right? So if you're trying to do subcategories to do tracking by expense, you could do that, but this is more for just general knowledge. Crediting cash, okay? So over here, 340 to record repairs and maintenance uh, to record to record uh, oil change and broke record costs. Whenever you're going through and during doing journal entry descriptions,
Right. And remember, it's repairs and maintenance expense, right? How do we go through and record expenses, right? Assets are equal to my liabilities plus my owner's equity, DC, ER, right? Record expenses with debit. Cash is going out, so I'm decreasing it. I decrease my assets with a credit. Okay, now let's go over here on 1130. I pay 4000 for an engine replacement on the vehicle. Okay, now I know right off the bat, right, that when I look at this over here, I'm going to show cash going out of four grand. Now, for this one over here, what do I want to do? Well, after the engine is replaced, the vehicle is expected to last another four years. So this kind of basically falls into a betterment, right? It's basically, it's going to last longer than it would have without the engine. So this one over here, I would say it's a betterment. So we're just going to go ahead and debit like, uh, vehicle or equipment. Um, we can call this equipment uh, engine. We would want to call it something where we kind of clearly identify what it was based to record purchase of a new engine for the vehicle. What we would want to go through and do, and we're call it when we're categorizing the asset, we would want to basically make sure that we're using something that can clearly identify it internally that we're going through and basically doing or essentially capitalizing this cost instead of putting it into repairs and maintenance. Now, here's the fun part. Okay, so we paid four grand for an engine replacement. And after the engine's replaced, it'll expect it to last another four years. The vehicle was originally purchased for 20,000 on 1126 and was expected to last for five years and have a $5,000 salvage value. We depreciated the asset using straight line. New salvage value after the engine replacement will be 6,000. Now what's kind of messed up about this question is that, well, I have to go through and record depreciation expense on the asset, right? By basically by year end, because if the transaction is as he basically, it's asking me to go through and to do the adjusting journal entry. So this is actually gonna kind of combine what we were going to be doing on the next slide, but we'll go ahead and do it now anyways. When I'm going through and doing a betterment or if something's happening with a change in the estimated useful life, right? My equipment originally cost me over here, it's cost me 20 grand, okay? When I go and look at this over here, my accumulated depreciation, how much was the accumulated depreciation that I took on the vehicle? Okay, so we use straight line depreciation. So over here, we've got our acquisition cost minus our salvage value divided by the estimated useful life. This is gonna be 20,000 minus 5,000 divided by an estimated useful life of, uh, let's see here, for five years. Okay, this is the initial depreciation calculation, not the new stuff, but the initial one. Why do I need to do this? Because once I'm now saying as of 1130, I have to figure out how much I depreciated the asset up until that date, and then use the new information to depreciate the asset going forward. Okay, I made this a little bit trickier, but we need to figure out how much depreciation expense did we take during the first four years that we owned the asset. So over here, my acquisition cost was 20. My initial salvage value was 5,000, right? I bought it on 1126. So over here, this is gonna be 15,000 by five, or we took 3,000 per year. So over here, I took 3,000 per year. And so, Basically, this asset over here 
had a net book or had an accumulated depreciation of 12,000. Okay. So on the date of the repair, when I spent this four grand, the asset value was what? It was basically net book value is going to be my equipment. What I originally paid for it, less my accumulated depreciation on the equipment of 12,000. This is going to give me equipment net of 8,000 bucks. Okay, so right over here. So this is as of 12-31-29. Okay. So, but what happened on one one thirty? Well, I spent another, right? I spent another four grand, right? So what is going to be my new depreciable base? Okay, so I have to, and right, by the way, what am I trying to go through and to figure out? I'm trying to figure out how much depreciation expense I should be taking for the year 2030, given the fact I just spent this four grand. So now for what I need to go through and do, so I have the equipment minus the accumulated depreciation plus the new equipment addition. Okay, so this is going to give me a total of 12,000. This is going to be the amount of my carrying value of my asset with the new engine. Okay, so again, it's the equipment what I originally paid for it. I took $12,000 of depreciation in total. That's $8,000 plus the new engine that I just put in has a carrying a value of 12,000. Now with the new engine, it says my salvage value will be $6,000. So what I'm gonna need to go through and do, and it's gonna last for four years from 1130. So what I now need to go through and do is my new depreciation expense for 2030 plus and beyond is gonna be 12,000 which is the new carrying value, right? The old one minus that accumulated depreciation plus the cost of the new engine minus my new salvage value. My new salvage value after I put in the new engine is $6,000. That's given this, that we're given that information in the question. I'm gonna divide this by four years, which is my new estimated useful life. So this is gonna be 6,000 divided by four or a total of 1,500. So when I put this over here, my depreciation expense over here is gonna be 1,500 for 2030. So what I would do is I would debit this for 1,500, debit depreciation expense for 1,500, credit accumulated depreciation for 1,500, Okay, so I want to tell my students who are taking me for financial accounting this. I typically don't, I would not give this question as a normal question. If anything, it would be extra credit. Why? This is more getting on the line of intermediate accounting, right? But what I do expect you to know if you're taking me for a lower division financial accounting course is I do expect you to know that what is, when we have expenses post acquisition, What's the definition, what's a betterment versus uh, repairs and maintenance expense, right? Can kind of be a foggy area, like Foggy's friend, uh, Daredevil's friend, right? We don't know. But again, that's something that we have to kind of go through and just see as we're, as we're looking at it. But it's not, I would not put something like this on an exam. Might be an intermediate, but not for this class. But any event or not for lower division financial accounting. So in any event, I want to thank you for being here with me today. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to list them out below and I appreciate you liking and subscribing to the channel. And I like, uh, I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Have a great day.